What we're going to look at here, Adobe After Effects 2022, is look at uh, track masking. And what that is, is more or less taking a mask that we already have and then just having move over the video. So it's actually going to track. It's going to track a certain motion. So what I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to bring in a video first because that's actually going to dictate to me how my composition is going to be set up. So here I have an image or a video I found online. I'm going to drag it into my project panel and there it is. Now, what does it tell me right away? It tells me a few things. It gives me the name of it. It gives me the dimensions of the 1920. 1080 great it gives me a few other it gives me the time so it's 13 seconds and 7 milliseconds and 25 frames per second now I can set up a new composition with all that information I say 1920 1080 25 frames per second all that stuff and it's gonna give me the, the and I'd have to set up that time length or I could actually just drag this image or sorry image or clip whatever you have this movie into my layer and my composition will now be set to that movie all to those movie specs so let's do that i'm just going to click and drag and bring that into my layer and a new comp was made automatically there it is it actually named the comp after the name of the movie which is boy basketball okay let's actually take a quick look at that comp i can go here and i can click on uh, composition and composition settings and i see it right there okay so it's 1920 1080 exactly 1920 1080 25 frames per second and it currently right now is going to be 13 seconds perfect that's exactly what the video was and that's how the composition was set up and even named it once again i could change the name if i want whatever i want i'll say okay and there it is now if i just play this through and take a quick peek at it i'm just going to press the space bar and i just see yeah you're just moving the ball back and forth and that's what i'm going to mask i'm going to mask it but i'm going to play around with it just a little bit just to show you what we could do with that now there's many different ways to mask but this is one very quick simple way now it can be you kind of have to play around with the video you have to understand what you actually want to mask out because sometimes it doesn't work out very well or it's very tedious or it's very difficult here i'm just going to show you a quick way to do it it's not perfect but it is something a way to do it now if i wanted to i actually can double click on the clip right here and if I double click on this clip, what it does, it takes me into this other viewer. So right there, layer, and it's just showing me the footage here. And I can play through the footage right here. I just press spacebar and it's just going through the footage, kind of showing me what's going on here. Just another way to show the footage and kind of what's happening there. A few different controls here. I'm not going to go through that, but I can just come back to my composition. I can close the layer footage and I can just kind of go through here again. So just one way to look at the footage if you want to just see the way it was or the way it currently is because we're going to change some things around here. Number one, what I'm going to do, I am going to cut a small area. I'm not going to do a huge area. I just want a little small area. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have the ball go uh, in one way, maybe right around there. And then he's going to throw it back over here. And that's what I'm going to track. So I'm going to start the ball over here, maybe right there. And I'm going to press option and I'm going to click on the open bracket. And what that does, it cuts my timeline. So it takes that layer and it's going to start it right where that CTI was. When I pressed option and open bracket, it actually brought it over here. Now I could have done that manually. Of course, I could have just brought it over here and it snaps to it. Great. Or I press option open bracket now the same is true if I go over and hover say I want the ball there and then I'm going to bring the ball back right about there let's just say perfect and now I want to do the same I want to take the end of the timeline and bring it right to the CTI or I could hold on option in close bracket and it brings it right there and that's exactly what I want so if I play that through I'm going to bring this right to the beginning I'm going to bring that first part of the layer right to the beginning of my composition I'm going to play it through and that's it and even if I go right about here I'm gonna say my new length is going to be a few seconds I can actually look at the duration I have here and I can actually go on that I'm actually going to bring up my duration I'm gonna right click on my layer here and I'm gonna bring up columns and I'm gonna look at duration and the duration is gonna show me exactly how long my clip is this is goes from here to here it's two seconds 21 mils okay let's do that composition composition settings Two and 21, let's do that. Zero, two, 21. Okay, and that's it. There's my full composition. Now that I've trimmed that down, my composition is only as long as that. And that's it, just kind of loops over and over and over, perfect. So now what I can do is set up my, my mask. 
So I'm gonna set up a mask first. And now this is gonna be a very simple mask. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna, what I'll probably do is just mask out the ball and maybe I'll change the color of it. I'll do something interesting with it. I'll show you in a little bit what I'm gonna do. There's a bunch of things you could do once the mask is set and it's been tracked and you're looking pretty good there. So this is a manual mask that I'm going to track. So what I can do, I'm going to start with a mask. Now, how do I mask? We've seen that before. We can do a layer new, uh, sorry, layer mask and new mask. That's not what I want. I can use the pen tool to do that and I can click around. Once again, that pen tool has the mask cursor on it. I'm just going to click a circle because it's already there and I have my layer selected and I'm just going to click and drag a circle. Now, it's not perfect and it doesn't need to be and, and that's what it does. It's a mask. It's already uh, kind of showing what's inside the mask and everything is out and that's because if i click on that i see my mask is shown it's the add the add blending mode so the blending mode is right now it's an add meaning it's going to show what's inside the mask and hide everything outside of the mask now the opposite of that is subtract it's going to show everything outside of the mask and everything inside the mask is not shown okay well right now i'm just going to say none because i want to play with both i want to play with the mask and the picture at the same time so i can actually see what's going on so in order to do this, to make the mask, the circle, fit the basketball perfectly, I'm going to click on my move tool and I'm just going to move the mask itself around. See, the, only the mask is moving. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm just going to bring this down. If I double click on the path, I can actually increase it. Now that's great. So I double clicked on the path. I'm just going to make it fit the ball here. So there I go there and there. And there I go. Now, I'm not going to cut out the fingers. Yes, I should potentially cut out the fingers. And now that's going to be a whole different situation and very tedious to kind of keep on doing that. I'm going to show you a quick way to do this. That's all. Obviously, we could play around with this in a certain way. This is what I'm going to do. So now that I have my mask set up and it's set on none for now, which like I said, I could see both, which is going to be very, very helpful. I'm going to click and make a mask path stopwatch animation and as it goes through each frame i'm actually going to move the mask as it goes on top of the ball and just keep the ball inside of that mask let's keep on doing that and see how this works so my next frame which i can also click the page down or page up so the page down gets me one frame over okay also command arrow to the right gets me one frame over or command left arrow back gets me one frame back. So I could actually move frame by frame holding down command and arrow right or arrow left. Or I could also page down goes to the right and page up goes to the same way. It just goes back, goes left. So let's just do whichever one doesn't really matter. There's my next frame. Now I see that the ball went back this way. Okay. So now on this frame in this area, because it's already on my stopwatch, I'm going to click on that mask and just bring it back. There I go. Perfect. Next frame. Bring it back again. Now, depending on what you're doing, it does not need to be perfect. But what it can do is offer you some interest that you might want to play around with. And depending, like I said, what you're trying to do, it could be very specific. I'm just gonna keep going. All right, so what I've done here now is I've actually played around with the ball and I have played, put the mask on 
every step of the way and I could always go back and fine tune if I ever needed to fine tune. So there it is there. If I bring it over here, there it is there. Like I, got, I could always play around with it on every little frame. I can go back to any frame and fine tune it. It will not affect any other frame. All right. So because even if I say I'm on this one and let's pretend I want to really fix it up. Let's pretend I mess up and go there. My next frame, it'll be back to normal where I had it originally. So I would just obviously bring this one back up on this particular frame. So each frame has its own mask path, its own adjustment. OK, now if I have that, that's it. I'm done. Now you can't really see what's going on right now, but that's it. Great, because my mask, once again, it was on none, so I can't really tell what's going on. What I can do now is I can mask out that ball. I can do different things with it. And the way we do that is I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to say add. OK, so I'm just going to see that and it's just going to be specific to that. But what I do is I'm going to duplicate this layer again, this movie. So command D, I'm going to put it underneath. I'm going to get rid of the mask. It's gone. And now I have this ball on its own, realistically, underneath is the full video, which is just going to follow that. But what I can do is I could add different effects to the background, which will only affect the background. I could add different effects to the ball, the mask, which will only affect the mask. So let's try it out. Let's just play around with it, have some fun. Let's see what we could do. So number one, let me zoom out here a little bit. Uh, actually, I'm going to bring this down and maybe I could zoom in to get a better sense of this. There we go. And I'm just going to, let's say I'm going to blur the background. So I'm just going to go to do a quick blur, blur and sharpen, get an effect here. Let's do a Gaussian blur, drag it on to this uh, one down here, this background. And I'm just going to give it a little bit more of a blur. Let's just try that out. OK, so everything's blurred out more blur except the ball. The ball now is going to stay and we can see once again, yeah, there's a bit of an issue with the fingers, but let's play through and just see what happens. So now just the ball is going to be, you know, the normal way it looked before. Now it does look a little off because of what was happening there. And it's always good to play around in your full resolution if you can. If your computer can't handle it, no worries. Let's go maybe half and try it out. What I can also do with the feather now, because it's a really hard edge mask, I can play with the feather. So let me add some feather to this mask. Let me just kind of dial it up a little bit and see if I go too much, it's going to fade too much. If let me bring it back right about here. Let's see where we're at. Maybe 25 and maybe that does a little bit more, a little bit better. Yeah, not too bad. A little bit of a halo around it still, but we're just playing around, having some fun with it. But what about the next thing I do? So I added a bit of a, um, you know, uh, effect to the background. Let's add an effect to the foreground. Let's add it to the actual ball. Let's do a color correction. We're just playing around, having some fun. You could do absolutely anything you want here if, for whatever reason you were doing this. And let's just do uh, Lumetri color, drag it on. Let's see what we could do here. Let's do a uh, color wheel and let's just change the color of the ball. Uh, I'm going to do some mid-tone first and let's go make it a green ball for some weird reason. Get my shadows in there and get my highlights in there. Okay, now I have a green ball. Now, yes, once again, the fingers are green. I would probably have to mask those out too, which I'm not going to do. But the idea is there. And now when I go back, here we go. Okay, my ball is kind of now a greenish tint, but I could do any kind of color changes I want whatsoever. The last thing I want to show you potentially here is now that I actually have the ball on its own layer, realistically, you can kind of think about it, the balls on its own layer. But meanwhile, it's just a max masked out version area of another video. I'm actually going to put a layer in between. I'm going to put a layer in between here. It's going to be a type layer. So I'm just going to click on some type and I'm just going to type, you know, basketball. And look what happens because it's set that way. It actually goes behind this layer, but in front of the background layer, depending on where I put it. Obviously, if it's in front, it'll be on top of everything. But because I have this situation, it kind of creates a pretty cool, interesting way. And because of the feather, we can see the feather a little bit more now, too. But let's just bring this back here. All right. And there's kind of this interesting thing here. Let's see how this goes. Once again, kind of a, a weird thing to do there, but generally uh, just to show you what you could do. So many capabilities with tracking um, and a, a track mask. There are other ways to work with this, but this is kind of the overall idea of masking out one area and then being able to change it separately from its background. I could even if I wanted to. 
I could bring in a whole different background now and actually just show the basketball just kind of going back and forth without that person there. So let's actually try that out. Let's bring in another background. All right, here I have another background and this is going to look very odd, but that's not the point. The point is what it would potentially look like. So I bring in this hot air balloon and I'm just going to bring it below and I have it there. Great. And I'm just going to shut off the background of uh, that I originally had and here I'm just going to show this now. So you could change it to any background whatsoever. Now, obviously, yes, this is going to look really weird and very odd, but the idea is you could put anything behind it now because it's been masked out. Now, the opposite is true. If I wanted to say, let's bring that back and let's mask this out and let's do a subtract. And now it's going to take it away. All right. So now it took that away. Now everything is green because it took that Lumetri and applied it to everything. And now it's just showing that. So we're playing around with something pretty interesting here. It's only showing below. And that's kind of interesting too. You know, what it's actually doing. That's pretty interesting how that worked out. So once again, track mask, pretty simple to use, but very tedious. You could really be uh, create some pretty interesting things by masking something out or actually just showing something using a mask. Because remember, a mask shows something or it hides something. We could play around with this quite a bit. So I hope this helps understand how track mask works. The next thing I want to show here with the track mat, uh, track mask is using actually After Effects to help you move it along, to help do it for you. Now I gotta say, I've played around with a lot of different videos and it doesn't always do the best job, but we're just gonna play around and see what it does. So I have this other video here, I'm gonna bring it in. And once again, I'm gonna let the video that I bring in dictate the specs for my composition. So right now I see man looking, it's an MOV, it's got a really huge uh, 4,000 by 2,100 uh, pixel density. It's got, it's 20 seconds, 25 frames per second. Let's just try it out. I'm just gonna drag it into my layer panel. And once again, really, really big, but that's okay. I'm gonna go to my layer comp. I could just do a command K, which I'm gonna do right now. And once again, 4,000 by 2,100 really really big kind of unnecessary but it is what it is it's going to be that 4k which is pretty cool and then i have my 25 frame rate and uh, you know the resolution half right now and it's all good it's 20 seconds long okay cool so what i can do now is i'm going to do something here once again very odd but for the most part just to show you how it works I'm going to pick a part of the frame, a part of this movie, I should say, and I'm just going to have a change. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to select one of the eyes, one of the irises. And I'm just going to change, uh, grab a mask on it, and I'm just going to change the color of it later. That's all I'm going to do. Very, very simple. So first, let me actually find a spot here. Actually, I'm going to do this just to make this even easier for myself. I am going to change the composition to 1920, 1080. Cool. And I'm just going to shrink this down. It's probably going to make things a lot easier for me in terms of the time I have to work on this, which is great. So still good. I can maybe potentially even go back to full resolution and do this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the same thing I did with my track mask. I'm going to just select my layer and make a mask. And I'm going to mask just the one eye for now. That's it right there. Okay. So I'm going to grab my pen tool. So unlike the other, I grabbed a actually shape. I'm just gonna grab the pen tool and I'm just gonna mask around. The closer I get, the more I zoom in to anything, uh, the obviously more detail I can get. But once again, what am I actually selecting? The individual pixels or can I actually grab like this kind of full more shape here? Cool. All right, and once again, it made a complete shape, so therefore it fully masked it out. Now what I can do is go back, twirl down, I see my mask, and I can just say none, and it will show both. It'll show my mask, and it will show the uh, underlying image, and I could always fine-tune this, whatever I want to do to make it work. However, I'm happy with that. So, now instead, if I play this through, and I see that the way this is moving, all right, I'm going to have it play for a while. And when it gets a little too much, when something has happening is kind of like, okay, there's too much motion going on that maybe After Effects is going to have a little bit of trouble with it. I'm going to stop it. So it actually happens. I've played this out before. Right where he blinks, that's a bit of the issue. So I'm going to bring it back. Right before he blinks, I'm going to keep it right there and I'm going to stop it. 
So actually, instead of stopping, I'm going to press Option. And on this layer, because that's where the CTI is, Option and Close Bracket, which will bring the end of the movie right back here. And this is all I need to see. This is all I want to track right up from there to here. So there's my mask at the very beginning, and it's ready to go. What I want to do now, I'm going to click on my mask, and there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to right click, and it's going to bring up track mask. Okay, I could do track mask right away. And what it does, it just brings up the tracker panel, which is what we want to use. It's the tracker panel. We could also find the tracker panel here, tracker, but we could also find track mask here under animation. Okay, so I have that ready. Now look at the tracker panel. What can I do? analyze so I can do a few different options of analyzing uh, one way if it, I can analyze backwards actually I can analyze forwards which is what I'm gonna do here I could do forward uh, I could actually change the method now the method is what's interesting here because you're actually gonna say okay what are you gonna follow are you gonna follow just the position of it are you gonna follow the position and rotation if there's any rotation to the specific object that you've masked is there any, are you going to change the position scale and rotation? Position scale, rotation, and skew. Are we going to follow that? Let's try. And there's also others perspective, face tracking. So if you're just trying to track a face, if I actually just track the whole outside of the, uh, the outline of the face and track the face, that potentially could work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do position, scale, rotation, and skew. That's my method. Now that's all I have to do now. I don't have to click on any keyframes or anything. The tracker is going to make the keyframes for me and we can watch them be made here. And they're going to appear on the mask path. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit just to watch. And I'm just going to press this play, this track selected mask forward and see what happens. See how well Adobe After Effects does it for me. All right, so as we saw what was happening there, as the eye moves and as the image moves, that mask moves with it. It's kind of recognizing that this is the area you want to cover. Now, potentially it works really well when you have something that doesn't move a lot or it's too drastic uh, motion. Potentially there's very good contrast between your edge uh, so I have dark here and light here. So potentially that helps out too. If there's too much texture, too many patterns, too many similar colors, shades, whatever the case is. After Effects is probably going to have a hard time figuring out exactly what you want it to concentrate on. Either way, it did a really good job here. So now what I can do, something very simply, I can click on my mask. Uh, I can duplicate this. So Command D. So now this one on below, I'm going to get rid of the mask because I don't want it. I want the mask to be here. And now I'm going to click on my mask again on the top one. And now it's going to be add. So now it's going to kind of separate that pupil, that iris, whatever, from um, the background on its own. So let's change the color. Let's go to effect. And we're going to change the color of the eye. Let's just do once again, lumetri, lumetri and bring it over. And I'm going to change the color. Uh, let's do something uh, pretty wild here. We're just kind of having some fun being silly. All right, it's got laser eye. So that's it. I'm just going to bring it back and let's shut off anything we have there. And let's just see how this goes. And that's it. Moves with it pretty good. So what I have here are all my frames that were set out. So once again, After Effects went through each frame and kind of moved it along the path, which was great. So once again, it did a uh, an option here where it, did the, it moved with the position, the scale, the rotation, and the skew. And I have it pretty close, which is great. So there I have that. And once again, I could feather it out a little bit if I want to feather it just a little bit or a lot, depending on what I want to do there. And maybe just a little bit more there. Perfect. And now let's do another one. Let's do the other eye. And now with this mask selected, I'm just going to select that and do the same. And let's see how this goes. All right. So now that that's done, I can kind of go back and take a look and see exactly what that did. And it follows suit if I just press play. Yeah, same idea. Let's add a little bit of feather here as well. So that had about 18. Let's add some feather as well. And that's it. Played around, it tracked it out really well. Now, once again, if there's some drastic movement, uh, I'm going to show you another video that um, does the same thing. But actually, right here, let's do this. Let's play around with this other option here. I'm just going to shut this one off. I'm going to duplicate this. 
So there's no mask on this one. And this time I'm just gonna do the face and let's see how it well it tracks the face. So I'll just do a little bit of a move here and move this down. So I have this one selected and I'm just gonna start playing around and see if it actually does, how well it tracks the face. Even though it's not moving a lot, I kinda just wanna see what it does here. All right, so that's all done. Let's go back to our mask and it doesn't seem to have connected. Let's undo and let's connect it. There we go. Yes, okay. It did connect and I'm just gonna say none, but because it's underneath, I can see that yes, it has uh, made a complete mask. Perfect. And now let's try and see how After Effects does with connecting this, the face here and doing a using an opposite method so I have my mask selected and I have to go back. Oh, I see what I did. I started on a different part here. This is actually good. So I started right about here. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually gonna go backward and then forward just to show you. This is actually a good option here. So I'm gonna do face tracking outline only. Let's see what it does. So I'm gonna go forward first and it's gonna do the forward ones. I'm gonna go back and it's gonna do the backward ones, the backward frames. Let's try this out. All right. And as I go, I see kind of cut off the top, didn't do great there, did pretty decent with the sides. Now let's go back to this keyframe here and let's go now backwards. All right, pretty good. So once again, still cut off. And the idea here, let's even just play around here, have some fun with it. I can maybe do a blur on this one here. So I'm just gonna do it, it is still on the add. I'm gonna go to my effects and I'm gonna put a blur on the face because we've seen this type of situation happen before. Uh, there was my Gaussian blur, drag it on, add some blur. You know, we don't want to see who the person is potentially. All right. And that's a kind of thing we can do there. And it just tracks the face a little bit. Interesting. Maybe we do a little distortion. Let's shut this effect off and see what this distortion does. Distort. And let's do a liquify. And what it does do, it keeps it all inside the mask, which is kind of interesting how that actually works, but nothing else gets distorted nothing else gets worked only what's inside the mask now that's pretty interesting how that can actually function and I'm kind of digging this so another way to play around with this I'm just going to show you one more video and the one video I had was what I used before and just to see how once again how After Effects can do something somewhat simple but see how how it has trouble with it too so here's this basketball clip again I'm just going to drag it in I'm going to shut everything off, collapse everything, and I'm gonna bring back this one in here at the top, and I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna bring it back, but this time I'm going to, once again, just choose a part of the clip. The ball is there. Yeah, the ball's there, great. I'm going to option trim the front, and then I'm gonna bring it over here, just one, right there let's just see right there and i'm going to trim the end of it and bring it right to the beginning here there we go okay so i'm going to do the same thing i have it here at the beginning i'm going to grab a circle around the ball so my layer is selected i'm just going to click and drag i'm going to change that mask to a none so i can see both at the same time i'm just going to move this make it fit and then this time I'm gonna let After Effects figure it out using the tracker say can you can you do this for me and let's see what it does okay so that's pretty pretty good not great not bad so that's it it's at the beginning I click on this I'm just gonna click on the track mask which would bring up the tracker and let's just go through it see what happens it's gonna work on the mask path and I'm just gonna press forward 
Now, I'm on the wrong one. I'm on face tracking. I just wanted to see what it did. Didn't do a great job. Okay, I'm going to undo that. Let's try another one. Let's just try position and see what position just does on its own. No, kind of stuck with the hand. Didn't really do too much. Undo that. Let's try position and rotation. Moved a little bit better. Still not enough. Let's go back. Yeah. Let's try the next one. Position scale and rotation. There's a little bit of scale. Did it get a little bit bigger? Oh, let me actually press play. There we go. No, still not following it too well. And let's do the last one here, which should give me the best, but we'll see what happens. Not really getting it. So that's where we'd have to maybe come in, fine tune, you know, the mask and bring it back. Oh, it's okay. And kind of do what we can here, which would be really tricky to do. But it is doable. I keep on double clicking. Anytime you double click there on that, it will go to that footage I don't want. I actually just want to stay on this comp composition. And I can move this around if I need to and fine tune it just to show you this option as well. And once again, the next one would be really off, so I'd have to fix that over and over and over again. But that's the idea. So uh, you know, the tracker does work. It can work in, in some situations. It'd be surprised if it works in more drastic uh, motion, but generally it does have a hard time. There are other ways, once again, to use a track mask, um, but these are kind of simple ways to do it. Uh, but we will definitely look at more advanced features as well. Okay, now we're going to look at a rotoscoping in After Effects. And what this does mainly, it helps with mask tracks. Again, that track mask where you actually have a mask or something that is hidden or shown and it moves with the video. So now we're going to use this other option, which instead of using the pen tool or any type of mask with vector paths, we're actually going to use somewhat of a brush tool to help us kind of do this. Now it's very similar to our select and mask in Photoshop and doing that refined edge where there is actually a refined edge brush here as well so we're gonna look at that so let's get started so instead of making a new composition I'm just gonna bring in a video that I found online and what I can do is with it I already have the specs so it's already set up 1920 1080 and it's 25 frames per second millions of colors great so you know what now that if I drag this in it's going to automatically create use those specs to create the composition and there it is so let's go look at the composition settings I could just press command K or control K on a PC 1920 1080 25 frames per second six seconds long okay perfect so there it is there's my man walking and that's what they name the comp as well if I want to change the name of the comp I could have done that as well so now that I have this here what I want to do is I instead of like I said instead of using the pen tool to create a path around this person I'm going to separate the foreground from the background which is ideally what we do I'm going to use the roto brush tool the roto brush allows me to kind of almost like paint it on uh, my mask or my mat as we would call it here as well so if I were to double click on this right here it would open up the layer in this viewport here and it would come up here if i double click on the actual uh file in the project panel i'm going to double click on here it opens up the footage so this is the actual footage i could play it through i could take a look at it see what's going on great but if i double click i'm going to i'm going to close that if i double click on it here i could actually now open up the layer it doesn't say footage it says layer now i'm working on the layer now, if I open up that footage, once again, double click on the project panel, the footage shows up. Now watch, with the rotoscope tool, the roto brush tool actually, I can't actually do anything on the footage. It won't allow me, the brush doesn't show up. But if I close that and I open up the layer, double click on the layer, the layer shows up and now look, my roto brush tool is active and I can play with it, great. So what I'm going to do here, I have my basic timeline here. I have my CTI set up. So if I scrub my CTI back here, it will also scrub back on this timeline as well. So I'm going to bring it back all the way to the beginning. And there it is right at the beginning. Now, what I'm going to do, realistically, I could cut this short and say, you know what? I'm not going to have it go the full six seconds, just three seconds. But this one works out pretty good. Now, it really does help if you have a video that has a good contrast between the subject and the background or the foreground and the background. Now, this particular subject, dark on the top here, dark here, is really good contrast between the background and the foreground. So that's really going to help us. If you have a 
particular video where it really blends in all together, the foreground and the background, is going to be very difficult for you either to mask it out with the pen tool or any type of mask like that, or even to use the roto brush. So here we're actually looking pretty good. So now that I have my brush active, I could actually look at some of these other options too. These are different viewing options. I can have it render, which I do. I want to see it actually render as I go. And I want to view uh, the masks right now, but it's going to change once I actually add my roto, my roto brush. So how can I use my roto brush? I'm going to bring this down a little bit so I can see a little bit better. See a little bit more here. Okay. So I have this in full view. And it's actually at 200% right now, which is fine. And what they always recommend with the roto brush is make sure that in your comp, if I go back to my comp here, make sure your resolution is set to full. It's going to be the best way for you to, um, for After Effects to help us create this, uh, this mask or this mat. Okay. So what I can do, I have my brush selected and it's green. I see this big green circle. Now, if I paint, that might be a little too much. I want to kind of select this subject. So what I can do to shrink my brush or enlarge my brush is hold down the command key or a control key on a PC and just click and drag. If I drag down, it makes it smaller. If I drag up, it makes it bigger. So a pretty cool way actually to change my brush size, which is really nice. So right now I'm just going to leave it right about here and I could start dragging. Now what they suggest you do when you paint on this area is just to give it as few strokes as possible. So let's see how it works. So I'm just going to do a quick stroke down here and see if that works. So I'm just going to do this. I'm going to click and drag about here and then here and then maybe here. Let's see. Once I let go, Adobe After Effects is going to use a magenta line to let me know where it feels the edge of the subject is and the background. And look at that. It did a pretty remarkable job. There's that magenta line. Looks pretty good. A bit of an issue there. It added some background. Bit of an issue here where it's kept some of that background there. But that's a little tricky too. So what we could do, we could fine tune this. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I'll use my hand tool, the space bar, to drag it down. Let go of the space bar. I go back to my roto brush tool. Now, if I want to subtract an area, instead of having it green right now, I could press Option or Alt on a PC and look what it does. It changes it to a red circle with a minus I'm about to subtract. So let's do that. But let's use the same tip. Let's just use one simple stroke to kind of get rid of it like that. Number one, I'm going to hold down Command and make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold down Option and just do a quick little stroke like that and look at that pretty close that's pretty amazing now it also kind of took this away so let's add it back i'm just going to do a quick little stroke there and hopefully add it back nope too much that's okay hold on option i'm going to get rid of it i'm going to zoom in a little bit more again it added that as well okay that's pretty good i'm going to go down here i see there's a bit of extra there just going to hold on option click and drag and see if it does yet yeah, fixes that nicely everything else looks pretty good here now I want to get rid of this area really quickly hold on command shrink it down hold on option and kind of paint an area in here let's just try that did pretty good all right not bad so it's looking pretty good it's not 100 percent perfect but what we could do we could also change up some of our specs over here on the roto brush and refine edge and the effect controls all right so keep in mind when we're actually doing this we're not actually making a mask it's not a mask it's actually utilizing an effect the roto brush and refine edge effect so we could actually play around with some of these specs here number one let's look at this okay so I kind of have something set up here already, all right? So my line is set up. It did a really good job with it. It hasn't tracked it yet. I've just set up my original mat. So there are a couple different versions. There's a classic 1.0 version that uses the Roto Brush tool a little bit differently, but an updated version of 2.0 uses it a very effective way and it gives us some different parameters. Great. The quality. I have a standard quality right now. That is good. It makes it go fast, <clears throat> but it leaves out some details, but it moves faster. If I set it to best, it'll go a little bit slower, but it'll be better quality in terms of picking up all the little details. So you know what? I'm going to keep it. I'm going to turn it to best and see what we can get out of that. It might go a little bit slower, but we'll try it out. 
propagation. So the propagation is the idea where it slowly figures out the mask every frame by frame by frame by frame. Now the propagation could go really slow. I'm going to leave it as is the search radius 30. I'm going to leave everything as is. You could enable the classic controls, which is version one, but I'm not. I'm just going to leave that alone because it generally does a really good job here. So the good thing about the uh, rotor brush tool is you can really control how it works, which is really good. I can play also with the rotor brush matte. So this is the actual magenta line and what it does. I can play with the feather. So if I want to increase the feather, I could do that. So right now it's set to five. Let's see what happens when I bring it up a bit. So there it is. I'm going to bring this down again, once again, just so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to bring up the feather really high. And we see, okay, it's feathering in a, in, a, in a different way. It's not really catching it, like really, really bad. So let me bring that back. I'm just going to undo Command Z back to five. I could play around with the contrast. I could play around with the shift edge. So I believe the shift edge moves it a little bit, changes the, expands it a little bit up to 100%. So we saw that it kind of moved there a little bit. I'm going to bring it back. So all the way up to 100. It moves it. It kind of shifts it away from the subject a little more, capturing a little bit more and I can reduce the chatter. I can play around with a few different options here. I'm just gonna bring that back down to zero. It's Titan. Maybe I'll bring that up to 50 actually. That looked pretty good at 50. So it moves it out just a little bit and saves it there. Great. Now I have this set up, that's good. I could use motion blur. So if there's a bit of motion blur in here, I can click that on and what it's going to do as well, it's gonna help me kind of capture some of the motion blur, some of that blurriness that happens in between the motion. I could do that. Another one here is I could decontaminate edge colors. So if any of these little edges pick up any lights from the background or another foreground, something different that's kind of making it worse, what I can do is I can shut that off and it will decontaminate those colored edges. It does a pretty good job of it, but once again, right now I don't think I really need that too much. The motion blur I noticed kind of played around here in a pretty interesting way where it's picking up some of that motion right here. So let's see actually how this works out. And the last thing I want to do is introduce the final brush here, which is not the roto brush, but it's the refine edge tool. Once again, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you'll know that if you select something, you could now go further select and mask inside of a panel. And inside that panel, you can refine the edge. You can make the edge even better. And what we do is we use Adobe to help us kind of figure that out. So what I want to do here is I kind of want to refine the edge here. Let's just say now his hair and his silhouette in general is actually very clean cut, hard edges, which is really good. Now, in some cases, you don't have that. In some cases, you might have a really fuzzy uh, edge, a very um, uh, clean, unclean edge where you have uh, hair or fuzz or something where it is just not as clean as that or even a building line like that. It actually has a lot more going on. So it's a softer edge. Well, let's pretend here it was a little bit more because I just want to show you what I can do with the refine edge. So I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Hold on command, click and drag up, make it a little bit bigger. And I'm just going to click on the hair. So here I have this brush selected. I'm just going to click and drag on the actual edge, on the path, a little bit on, a little bit off. So there it is. And now when I let go, after Effects is going to figure that out. So what it does is the white area is what it's going to keep inside of the of that magenta line. It's going to use that and the black area is going to be gone. That's going to be part of the background. So it kind of helped me define what I had there. And once I used that Refine Edge brush tool, look what happened. It opened up my options for the Refine Edge mat. So I'm just going to close that. And now I have this option to play with the refine edge mat. I can play around with the smooth of that, the feather of that, the contrast. I can control how much of that selection is used or not used or, you know, quite a bit quality there. So I have my best on. It's 2.0. I've played around here a little bit. So now let's kind of go a little bit further here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. All right. And now when I did this, what happened was... I have this option here now to render. So I could actually look at the render while it's happening. And I also have this new option to view. What do I want to view? Do I want to view nothing? So it takes that off. Do I want to view the masks? No masks. Do I want to view the anchor point path? No anchor point path. Do I want to view the roto brush and refine edge? And that's exactly what it shows me right there. So it shows me what is actually happening. But I have some views. I have some options here to take a look as well. So let's take a look at what these do. Toggle refine edge x-ray. So that's kind of what we had on. It shows me 
what is actually being selected, how it was selected, and this x-ray where it kind of blacks out the, or grays out the, the background a little bit, which is pretty cool. I also have this option now to toggle alpha, so I can toggle the alpha. So this is kind of like just the mask. The black is something that hides, and the white is something that shows, right? Just like in Photoshop, white is white reveals, black conceals. And that's kind of what we use there, but I'm gonna shut that one off. Then I have this option to toggle the alpha boundary, so I can kind of bring that back just like that. Okay, that's kind of what I'd like to see, just so I could see how well it's doing. And then I also have this option to actually do an overlay, and the overlay, I could actually change the color to anything I want. Let's just make it green for now. And now this kind of once also gives me a sense of what's actually happening. What am I actually cutting out? Uh, what is the really difference between the foreground and the background? So you know what? I don't really need to see that, but I will take a look at this. I do like this option, which is pretty cool. So a couple different viewing options, which we could use, which is great. So now what I have down here, I have this green bar, which what is happening here, it's already kind of started to propagate or to look at the motion with this mask or the mat, I should say. And these gray chevrons that are pointing this way are kind of saying, okay, from here on and moving forward, we're gonna start to make the action move forward. So the, the way to start doing this is just press the space bar. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit and I'm gonna get it back to 100%. I'm gonna bring this back up. So I can see what's happening here and I'm going to press the space bar. And what's going to happen is now After Effects is going to follow that path and follow along this particular subject, separating the background from the foreground. And let's see how that works. Let's press the space bar. All right, that worked out. So we see as it goes, the mask is really doing a good job following that foreground character, following that main, separating the foreground from the background. That's really impressive. So I'm just gonna stop that for a second. And I'm gonna just move it down the CTI because I did see a little bit of an issue. Let's see if we could fix this a little bit more. So when this bag swings, and remember I had it on the best quality, so it went really, really slow. But if you have it on standard, it'll go fast, but the detail might not be as good. But once again, depending on your video, depending on what's going on, you might want to play around with some of these settings to make it work a little bit better for you and keep kind of going back and forth. So right about here, I had this issue with this bag here. And I just want to catch it again. I'll catch it at this spot right here just to show you how you can actually go back in and change some of the frames, even though you're... Um, it kind of worked out quite well. So right here, I just want to add that. I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to go back to my rotor brush tool. And I'm just going to click and drag that in. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And I'm going to hold down the opposite option and get rid and see what, let's see what happens. So now what it did was at this point, it turned these back to gray that it needs to kind of fix these again because I just changed that. And now as I move it forward a little bit more and a little bit more, it's slowly propagating. It's slowly figuring out how am I going to include that? How am I going to fix that? And as I go a little bit further and a little bit further, move that timeline along, it's going to keep adding more propagated frames because it's still trying to figure out what's happening. And I can keep pushing it along and along. But if I just press spacebar one more time, it's kind of going to do it for me. Okay. So I'd have to kind of keep pushing it along, but I'm just going to press the spacebar and have it play through one more time and see how well it puts it all together. All right, there we go. Let me zoom out again. And there it is, pretty good. Now, I'm happy with this. Let's say this looks great. I'm not gonna make any more changes. It looks good, even some issues, that's okay. Let's just pretend it's great because it did look really good. I can actually now freeze this. And what this does, it free, It almost like saves this mat so nothing will change on it. Now, I could always unfreeze it and fix it, but the reason why I wanna freeze it, because what it does, it saves it and it Every time I play with it, play it back, do something, it won't continue to try to propagate. It won't continue to try to figure its mat out again and work with the motion and everything. It's going to save it, and I won't have any issues of it constantly trying to reload itself, reload itself over and over. So I'm going to freeze it, and this is the one time it's going to happen. And, I, and then I will just be able to play with it really quickly after that. So I'm going to freeze. And now it's going to remember everything here, and I'll be able to use it continually. All right, so what it did now 
instead of having it green and showing that yes it took it and that's it moved it with it now it made it kind of this blue purpley color and just saying yeah it's frozen now it's locked in place which is great so roto brush and refine edge propagation is frozen unfreeze to update so if i want to change anything on this i'd have to unfreeze it make some changes and not that i could freeze it again but don't really need to because i'm happy with what it did and it's always a good idea to make sure you're ex happy with exactly what happened with the mat and then you can freeze it so that's it i'm done I'm going to go back to my composition here and I see what happened here. I, it's actually here. That's exactly it. It cut it out quite nicely all by itself, which is really good. Now it's an effect which I could always go back and change some of this up. Now, once again, I probably would have to unfreeze in order to make some changes, but that's okay. I would do that prior to freezing. And now let's play around with this a little bit. I've, I've almost kind of like took out the foreground from the background, but I could always bring it back in. So I'm going to do a command D and I'm just going to delete the effects from the bottom one. So the video shows as normal, but remember there is a separation. There's the foreground on this layer. Let's actually call it this way. I'm going to enter this and call this is a man walking foreground. And this is man walking background. And that's it. So now what I can do is I can, once again, if I shut this off, nothing really changes, but there is a change. It is actually laying on top. If I shut this off, it's on its own. So let's change up the background a little bit. Let's add a blur to it. So here's my Gaussian blur. I'm gonna drag and drop that in. Let's add a little extra blur. And now we really have it stand out or whatever we wanna do there. It doesn't really matter, playing around. Great. Another option, as I've shown before, grab a little type tool right above the background layer, but. Uh, but behind the foreground layer, I'm just going to type in and make this a little bit bigger. There we go. And now let's look at what this looks like when I just play this through. Now it's going a little slow, so I'm just gonna stop it. And I'm gonna go to maybe a third, and let's bring it back. And let's see if this goes a little bit better. But once again, it did a really good job with those edges and how well it did. And even third is going a little slow. Let's go to a quarter. So pretty good, and once again, now it's pixelated obviously because of that quarter, but it did a really good job with that. Now I could play around so much more. I could put this particular person on top of a totally different background altogether. It doesn't matter whatever background I choose to put it on. So that's how we use the rotor brush tool. That's how we can kind of create a different type of mat uh, a different type of idea of a mask where you show something, you hide something, but instead of using the pen tool and all the different nodes and anchor points and a path, you actually use a brush tool to help you to help you figure that out. So I hope this helps understand Rotobrush. So another thing we can do here is also to take this subject or this masked person and actually overlay it over top of any other type of background. So I did find another background here. I have it right here. It's a beach scene. And I'm just going to bring it to my project panel. There it is. And it matches a lot of what's going on. 25 frames per second, 19, 20, 10, 80. I'm just going to bring it into my layer panel now. And now it's going to be my new background. And there it is. Now if I play it through... It'll kind of have this scene set up where he's walking and the beach scene is kind of happening there. Obviously, it's kind of silly, of course, but we could have some fun with it. Let's actually make a bit of a transform. So this is kind of almost like an alpha where it's just this object. These pixels are shown and all the other pictures are not shown. So let's play around with some animation here. What I could do, I'm going to bring this back because this looks weird because he's just standing there walking, but he's actually not going anywhere. So let's give him a little bit of... Uh, change in position. So I'm going to have his position here and I'm going to bring him over here. All right. And then obviously at the end, I'm going to have him go and the new position will be here. So I just made that keyframe there. Let's actually have him leave. And even over here, let's have him start off screen. All right. Let's try this out and see what we get. All right. 
kind of interesting what we could do with that and all these other kind of masked or matted um, areas we have and showing some pixels and placing them on different backgrounds, anything actually, quite frankly. So this is one way to play around with those masks and actually make them work. Uh, in a kind of interesting way. So I hope you learned something here to help you play around with some video content and masking, track mask, rotoscoping can really be beneficial. All right, now we're going to look at something else that could help us create some type of masking and mat uh, using uh, Mocha. Now it's already a part of our uh, effects here. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring in a video where we're going to try to actually you know extrapolate get some information from it which is this balloon so i found this balloon 1920 1080 23.976 i'm just going to grab it and bring it into my layer and now my composition is exactly that command k or control k on a pc 1920 1080 23.976 very odd frame rate but nonetheless 23 seconds say okay so here it is, and once again, what I want to do is kind of take out some of that balloon and maybe uh, get rid of the background and then bring this into another, uh, bring another background in and have the balloon kind of float in a new background. So I'm going to play around with that. So what I'm going to do now is instead of, you know, doing a track mask, instead of doing rotoscoping, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use this option here. It's actually right under here, Boris FX Mocha, or you just type in Mocha and it'll show up. Mocha AE. So whatever I apply this to, it's going to apply it to that specific layer so I'm gonna click and drag and bring it onto this layer now I already had it kind of open before so it's a, it's its own panel it's set up in its own way and a new panel will show or actually sorry in the effects controls here this shows up here we have some controls here so I'm gonna click on the mocha link which is going to open up mocha in a new panel so it's kind of its own panel its own kind of engine within After Effects. And here it shows up now, there's kind of like, wow, there's a lot happening here. I'm gonna go through it really quickly. So number one, first thing to look at is you can look at an Essentials mode, which gives you basically the essentials on how to do this, which, you know, I'm it's, it's good uh, to work with for sure, but it gets rid of some of the things that I wanna go through in the Classic mode. There's also a Roto mode, so you can do some rotoscoping in here, but I'm gonna click on Classics, and obviously we're gonna get more tools. So Classic, and it kind of gives you everything. So if you at least know the Classic mode, you could definitely look at, what the other ones offer and kind of what is not there anymore. So this is going to help us save. So we're going to do this at the end. We're going to save. This is going to help us select. Uh, these are also options to select. And uh, then I have my hand tool, which instead of using the hand tool, uh, you can use uh, X on your keyboard. So learning new keyboard shortcuts for some of these tools is a little interesting. So X will control the hand tool. And if I let go of it, I'm back on my other tool. And obviously the magnifying tool is Z. So I could just use Z and go in and out with my magnifying. My there you go. And then I have my uh, X spline, which is your Bezier tool, your pen tool, which is going to help us create um, our paths around whatever we want. Or we could use a shape layer like a, a rectangle or square or a circle. We could play around with those. Some of these other options we don't really play around with too much um, right now. Uh, we are going to look at this is our layer panel where our layers are going to show up. We have some options down here to play around with how we want the um, mask to be tracked, how we want it to work. But either way, now I just want to focus here and actually let's just get started. So I don't want to use the whole video. I just want to use part of it. Now, some of this video, we can see the balloon is cut off. Now, that would be an issue if I want to place this in another background and, you know, part of it's cut off, it kind of doesn't make sense. So what I want to do is I want to use part of the timeline. I don't want to use the whole timeline. So here I have access to the timeline. I have access to my markers, my set in point. If I want to reset it, another set out point. I have access to what I can see, zoom in and out of my out points, zoom to full frame region. Here is just my play method, my, you know, back and forth, my stop, my play, all that, how I want it to play. Then here's my tracking, which I want to play with. This is what I'm going to look at tracking. And then here's some other keyframe options as well, which once again, we're not going to worry too much about here, but it all really does depend on the type of video you're using. If this might even be an option for you. So what I want to do is I'm going to grab my uh, CTI and I'm just going to click and drag it. Now, what I noticed is I can't really grab the top triangle. It's I have to grab the stem of that CTI and move it. It's just easier to do it that way. So I'm going to grab it where a point where I could see the full balloon, which is roughly about there. I could kind of see the top and the bottom and I'm going to cut it off right about here, which is fine. So what I want to do now, I'm going to set my new endpoint at here or I could have just clicked and dragged it and there it is. And then I'm going to move my CTI a little bit further. OK, where can I go? I want to track all this right about here is where it starts to get cut off. So right about there. So I'm going to set in my new endpoint, which I could just click and drag in 
or I could just click here and it's my new endpoint. So that's it. That's all that's going to track is in this area. That's all I really want. Great. So I'm going to bring it back to the first frame of the area that I want. And now I'm going to show, I'm going to actually bring in my mask. So how can I do that? Yes, I can use my X spline. And I do want to show you this because it is pretty interesting. I'm going to open this up a little bit more and zoom in because the way this works, I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to use my, um, where are we here? I'm going to zoom in here. The way the X spline or this pen tool works is a little bit different than what we're used to, especially in Illustrator, Photoshop and design and even uh, After Effects the way it worked. It's I'm going to click and there's my first click and it does have the anchor points too. Sorry, this thing tends to move on me a bit for some reason. And what I can do now is I can click another point and it's a little bit odd. What are these little stems here? It's kind of weird. What those do is they help me control the curve. So I'm not going to draw a ton of points here and what I actually might end up doing is using the sh the circle tool anyway so I'm just going to click and drag around and when I get to the last point I'm going to right click which closes my shape and there we go right click good so what I can do now I could actually control this in a few ways this gray bounding box around the whole thing I can control just like this it moves the whole shape all together great I could use the tops, the sides, the corners. I could do whatever. The other way to work with this is to actually go over the individual blue points here and work with those and move those around, these little anchor points. And then the last way to work with it is to actually use these blue stems here and it controls the curve of it. It controls how much of the curve is there, which is pretty cool. It's, it's actually not a bad way to work with it, uh, to play around with it. Uh, but once again, what I'm going to do, I just wanted to show you that really quickly. What I'm going to do is I am going to use the circle, the ellipse tool to show you that as well. And it definitely works with this really well. So I'm actually going to delete this path. But as you notice, when I actually started making this, a new path, a new layer showed up and this is the layer. So this path or this mask, we could even call it is on its own layer and I could just delete that. It's gone. So now I'm going to grab the circle tool the elliptical tool and do the same thing. I'm going to grab from the center. And now this is what's good about Mocha too. I can option, which drags from the center, hold down option or alt on a PC. I can hold down shift to keep it a perfect circle, but we know currently this is not a perfect circle. And I'm just going to make sure it goes to the top and at least to the bottom. There I go. Oh, I went too far again. That's my mouse problem. So there it is. It's a full circle. Nice. So what I can do from here, I'm going to use my um, bounding box and I'm just going to drag it out so I want to focus on the red area is what I want to have used here so I'm just dragging that out as best I can and once again this is not going to be perfect it's kind of a quick way to get us there but generally it does help and what Mocha is going to do it's going to kind of you know help us get there a little bit quicker than if we were to do this all manually which is like the worst case scenario but still a viable option so I'm going to kind of get it where I want at this point now I know that the balloon kind of pops out there a little bit I'm gonna just kind of focus on this main circle part here and there I go so now the tracking begins so I'm happy with my initial mask and now what I'm gonna say is okay this red line says nothing has been tracked here yet so uh, Mocha didn't do any work yet and now down here I could take a look more at what I wanted to do so just like in the track mask option, I was able to say, yeah, focus on the position, the scale, rotation, perspective, all that. So I still want translation, scale, rotation, shear, potentially, because obviously it's going to change. Maybe I need a large motion, small motion. I'm going to focus on large motion. So these are kind of some options that can help us when it starts to track. But as of right now, I have my first layer here. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to name it later. And I'm just going to track it. So here's an interesting one we could do. We could track it straight. So it's already at the beginning. So I'm going to track it this way. So I can't track backwards. I can only track forward. So if I track forward, it's going to do it all for me. It's just going to go through every frame and do it for me. However, I could also do it frame by frame manually. So I could click on one frame and adjust it. Click on the next frame and adjust it. Click on another frame and adjust it. But what I want, the whole point of this is for kind of Mocha to recognize what's going on. So I'm going to set it at the beginning and I'm going to let Mocha figure out what's going on. Then I can fine tune it later. So let's click on this tracking, which is going to track it forward all the way up to my out point. And let's see how this looks. Oh, 
all right there it is if i bring it back i'll go through it i'll just scrub through and i notice obviously huge issues here big issues here. but once again it's not horrible because i could quickly fix up that mask and i'm looking pretty good however once again depending on the movie clip that you're using there could be an issue where you have a lot of points and you need to move them all. That could be problematic, you're right. However, if you really want to fine tune it, you can do some amazing work here. It's just tedious, takes a lot of time, but it is a good functional way to make that work. So, I'm going to start at the beginning again. I'm just going to go through frame by frame. And I could even use this tool here to kind of get me from one frame to another. And I could even use this tool to get me there too. So instead of continuing to track it, I could actually just go frame by frame, fix it, frame by frame, fix it. So now I see that the line here is blue. It's no longer red, meaning, yes, it's, has, it's been tracked. It's good. But, you know, I, need to, I do need to fix it. So I'm going to go step by step and start fixing this. I'm going to start on my first frame. Looks good. Go to my next frame. And I can start to fine tune all these little things. And let me actually start going through this and see how fast I can go here. All right, so I definitely did some fine tuning there just to fix it up and it kind of at some points it went really fast and some points a little bit it took a little bit more time. So I'm done. I'm happy with it. I saw what it did and I'm just going to leave it alone now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to save it. So clicking on here saves it. So I save it and I can even name the layer properly. So I'm just going to double click on this and I'm going to name the layer um, just balloon or yeah, balloon. All right done i'm going to save it again and i'm going to close it now i close it all that information is saved great so what i can do now is here in mocha i actually can now control the mat and some of the tracking data but i'm not really going to focus too much on that so can i view the mat yes let's look at the mat okay now clearly this whole thing is not used but i only use up from here to here and it shows me the mat it shows me what is actually shown and what's not shown the visible pixels and the invisible so the white shows and the black hides just very similar to a mask in photoshop where if you paint white on a mask it shows more if you paint black on a mask it hides more okay great so that's the mask right there now i could also just uh, apply the mat and actually see how the mat looks in general to this video great Okay, so that's what I wanted to see there. And I can show the visible layers. So these are the layers that I use in Mocha. So it says balloon. Yeah, I can shut it on or off, but that's the one I do want to use. Great. Because right now, the information is actually not installed yet onto this. So I have my effects and I can see Mocha, but you can see there's no keyframes. Okay, so let's utilize that. Now I could see that. I'm going to the shape. I could play around with the feather if I want to play around with the feather. All right, so how much of that feather do I want to be really close? Can I add just maybe a little bit uh, of feathering so it's not so tight? Let's just say 10. And invert mask. Do I want to invert the mask? Do I not? Of course not in this situation. Tracking data. I can look at different, uh, different options here if I want to really play around with that a little bit more, which I don't currently. Depending on your video, depending on what you want to do, you may want to play around, but generally I didn't. And then I just, that's it. The last final thing you want to do is create AE mask. So create After Effects masks to apply to this layer. So I'm just going to create. And there we go. There they all are. They are all of, so all that information from Mocha was now applied. And now it's going to move with it just like that. Great. And I'm good to go. That's all. So I'm going to go up to this keyframe here. And I'm going to bring in my layer, my endpoint. To I'm going to press Option and Open Bracket. And I'm going to go to the end of the keyframes right here and option close bracket. And now I have that there and that's it. Great. I'm done. And I'm going to bring this all back to the beginning. And now what I can do, I'm going to bring in another movie, which is a background here. Open my project. And remember, if your project's not open, but you want to bring something, you want to drag it in. Not a problem. Click and drag, bring it in and just hover over project panel and then it'll open up. And now I have my sky movie, which is great. Now a different frame rate, but that's okay. I just want to show you this really quickly. I'm just going to bring it down underneath and now my sky will show up. Great. A little bit bigger. So I'm going to shrink it down. There we go. And then obviously this is a little bit longer too. So I'm going to bring this back as well up to the keyframe of the balloon. And there's my three second clip. I'm just going to play it through. And now it kind of looked like it belongs there. It did a pretty good job. That feathering really helped out. Uh, if I go up to, let me stop this a second. I'm going to bring it up to 100%. 
And now what we did is we kind of masked out or created another mat for this for this one scene, this balloon. We cut it out from one video moving clip and we brought it into another uh, using Mocha, which is one different way to use it. So now you have, you know, quite a few different ways to create these track masks using your simple uh, mask and playing around with the uh, mask path manually using the tracker tool. If you want to use the tracker tool over here to do that, uh, using rotoscoping, if you want to use a rotoscope brush instead of using individual points or using Mocha to help you along too. So there's quite a few different ways to do this. And I hope one really works out for you and kind of mastering one to help you along if you ever have to do this.